Good morning. I am about to head out. I'm kind of running a little bit late. Today is all Japanese dialogue, so I'm not needed. And I'm going to meet Cecilia, who is one of the actor's English teachers. Now, truth be told, whenever the production tells me, oh, so-and-so has their own private English teacher, I always get a little bit nervous that maybe they'll see me as a threat or that I'll somehow be interfering with their process or they will interfere with mine. Every time someone brings their own English teacher, we wind up being great friends and it's really great to have two people working with someone and we are also pretty good company and I've remained friends with some of the English teachers of uh, celebrities I've worked with and it's never ever been a problem. So Cecilia and I today will go somewhere that she's chosen and uh, I don't really care where we're going as long as we're going somewhere so we'll see what that is. I'm gonna go meet her at her hotel now. Good morning, Cecilia. Let's go. Okay. Where are we going? Uh, the train station. Okay. Will you be in my movie today? Uh, yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Can his what? Historic. Historic quarter. Yes. Lovely. Like bridge. There are fish in here. You can take photos inside the Ohara Museum of Art. So what I've done is I've purchased postcards from some of my favorite paintings that I saw there, and I'll tell you about those. This one's kind of simple. Uh, the artist is Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, Landscape of La Ferté Milon, which I just like it because France just really looks like that. And it reminds me so much of the house where my adoptive French grandparents live, way out in the countryside. This is the second piece that I like. Uh, Ferdinand Hodler, never heard of him. This is called The Woodcutter, 1910. So what I find interesting is, you know, it's so scratchy and the lines are very kind of stiff. But then there's all this movement in it, and you can almost feel like his muscles are tensing to deliver a blow to the wood down here. And this blue thing, I can't figure it out. But I know that if you didn't have it, the painting wouldn't work. So they had to put something blue here. This... Oh, it's upside down. There we go. Uh, this is from Hans Hartung. It's called T1964 R23, and it was made in 1964. My favorite comment came from Cecilia, who said, Why is this art? Anybody can do this. It's not interesting. And she's not wrong. This is not that interesting. But one thing that's so great about art is that it's like a process, right? Like you can have a picture of a pot of flowers and that might be amazing for you, or you could have something like this. And, you know, you can think about how they made it and why. Like, for example, here, this scratchy bit, you know, Mr. Hartung had to think about how to scratch it out, and maybe there are le several layers to this. I think a good argument can be made that if you have to explain your art, it's not particularly strong. 
But maybe another argument would be that's just a different kind of art. It's an art that requires context. Much like how vloggers are actually not that interesting one by one, but if you look at a body of work, it can be very interesting. Like if you follow a daily vlogger, you can kind of feel like a part of that process of that person's life. And art can be the same way, I think. I want to talk about this painting, which is the prized possession of the museum. It's called The Annunciation, and it's by El Greco. It was made between 1590 and 1603, which means it's really old. It's really, really old. And what's remarkable, according to what I read, was that this guy was very much ahead of his time. He made several versions of this painting. And this is believed to be one of the last ones, if not the last one. And what's remarkable is that there's no place. This is a biblical story. You know, the archangel comes down and tells Mary she's going to carry the Son of God. And she's very studious and uh, is pious, you know, because she's got the halo. And the dove there is like peace and the lilies as well, I guess. And, you know, they're having this conversation and she's accepting her divine fate. But we don't know where they are, right? There's no place. And it looks like a comic book, right? Like, it could totally be a graphic novel from a very recent time. So yeah, El Greco, he was, he was with it. Now these are the pieces I find the most interesting. Check this out. To me, this is totally French, but it was painted by Maeta Kanji. It's called Two Laborers, 1923. But you can really see an influence from the French here. I think there's a bit of homoerotic suggestion here. But I could be wrong. But I could be right. And you can see here, he's playing with, you know, perception and shape, depth. Normally when I think about Japanese art, I think about something more like this. And not this. And this was made before the war. Let's look at another piece. This is also very French. It's by Saeki Yuzo, and it's called Poster Verdun. And you can see here, because there's like a poster here with Verdun. I guess it's a product of some kind. I don't know it. And what I love about it is that it looks like the neighborhood I lived in in France, in Paris, when I was a student. And I'm just blown away by how much it hasn't changed and how well this artist, you know, got the feeling of, of it. Because it's kind of run down, but still kind of romantic in a very French way. The last two paintings are from Mr. Kojima Torajiro, and they're really special in, in different ways. So this is the first one. You can see it's a young woman watering some plants. She's wearing a kimono. This is called Morning Glory, and it was made between 1917 and 1918. What I find so remarkable about this is that it's really a French impressionistic painting. The next one has a very similar kind of magic about it. see here, there's a young mother, uh, and it looks like she was just breastfeeding her child, or maybe is about to, and then there's a second child there. You can see his efforts to master light in this. You see here on the cloth, he does it in such a way as to make it look translucent. And then see the beautiful light here on the head of the baby? And then his arm. That's clearly European influence, and you might see it in a painter like Ingres, who did um, La Bagneuse, the Bever, um, and also the Death of Marat. The last uh, painting that I really loved was this one. It was actually really big. I think it was two or three or four panels. It was, I think, I think it was, it was big though. I just remember it being big. 
and uh, it's a map of the Kurashiki area. There's a close-up version here. And I love it because it's clearly influenced by a traditional style, but then it's also very like Google Maps and Where's Waldo at the same time. I didn't expect to find this beautiful museum in Kurashiki. I just was tagging along with Cecilia, and poor Cecilia didn't expect me to be such a fan of this art. But I really enjoyed this museum, and I highly recommend that if you're at all into art, please visit this museum. If you're anywhere near Okayama or Osaka even, please come to this museum. You will not regret it. The last note I wanted to make was, while we were walking around, I was still thinking about all this art there. At the risk of sounding a little bit sappy, it made me really grateful for my education. I think at the moment there's a lot of stress in the world concerning economy and politics, and people aren't so sure of themselves, and I feel that young people are encouraged to pursue subjects that are more stable, that are more practical, that are better positioned to get jobs for the future. This is reasonable. This said, even in my short life, I can see that the economy is a really fluid thing, and the state of the world is a very fluid thing. What we know today is definitely not what we'll know tomorrow, but what is fixed is our humanity. And what we accumulate in terms of knowledge and wisdom makes us human. So even when things are bad, things like art, literature, the soft things that we're discouraged from pursuing as practical people are valuable. That's what I thought about while I was boring poor Cecilia about all this art. On that note, I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for your patience if you've made it this far. Please don't forget to subscribe. I promise not to do this too often. Have a good one.